This week on Marae, reaching for the sky. E hara te kaupapa nei i te Ngāwari, engari e hara hoki i te uaua. Mā te tangata e kai ngākau ana ki te mahi i ene o ngā mahinga, te rakua ea. Then, living with a wreck three years after the rena. Remove it. Simple. And the light of a father's love. Taking flight and soaring high has been a dream for many Māori children, and this dream is fast becoming a reality for more young Māori with the help of Massey University's School of Aviation. Yes, we caught up with two young men who want to be captains of their own destiny. Yeah, we'll be counting stars. Ko te ako ki a rere, ka tīmata ki konei. Cars and tower, Messi 807 inbound, RNA 07 circling 253 on board, Charlie 1013. Mo te wā roa tēnei rangatahi nō te arawa, e hia hia ana ki a kāpene i tōnā ke waka. And me being a tutu, I wanted to be able to operate and manipulate the controls and understand what they all meant. Ko waia a te rewiti Graham ki te hautū, waka whai hanga. Is that grief complete? It is complete. When I was five, every weekend, my koro and my nan, they used to take me out to the airport in Rotorua. That was bliss. Nā whai anō he tauira ia o te kūninga ki pūrehu roa ki te papa i oia. Ko te ātāro wai me te āta tiro tiro te mahi. Hey, before starting checklist, pre-flight inspection. Information ego issued at 2, 1, 2. Rā, kua rite ki te rere. I'm also very, very happy to get up. You know, any time there's a chance to get into the air, you know, I love it. It's just, it's like a piece of mind up there, you know. It's a completely different world. We left when it was sunny. 20 minutes later it was raining. <laughs> we couldn't see much, so yeah, the, the weather is so changeable here and that's just like other places in the world, you get to try all of it. E ai ki te kōrero a te kura, ki te mōhi o koe ki te rere i te papa i oia, kei a koe te ao. He can land a plane, he can make all those critical decisions that he needs to make and he can do it all by himself. Hoki mai ana ki te papa, Kā tūtaki atu te tokorua nei ki ētehi atu Māori i te ao rerenga. I rāranga mātou ki a kotahi ai, a hako te etsi, a kei ko nā mātou ki a mātou e āwhina e whakahike ana te wairua. Ko Davidson Taylor e whai hoki ana i te tohu paitahi pairata waka rererangi. He whainga tēnei mōku mai rāno ka hoki ngā mahara ki te wā I urua tuau i roto i ngā taua ārangi mō ngā taiohi. I hare au ki runga i tōku rerenga tuatahi ki reira. I te rāwa ka whakāro au ke te pirangi ana hau ki te mauria i tōku whānau ki roto i te rangi. E hara te kaupapa nei i te Ngāwari, engari e hara hoki i te uaua. Mā te tangata e kai ngākau ana ki te mahi i ene o ngā mahinga, te rakua ea. Ko Dr. Severn Reweti, kai te para i te huarahi mō ngai Māori i te ao hangarau rerenga. He whakaako i ngā tātai whika tana mahi. When I retired from the Air Force, I came and joined the Massey School of Aviation and continued with some of the stuff I was doing in the Air Force, namely aeroscience, teaching aeroscience and further developing flight simulation devices. We'll just do an ILS approach into, into Auckland and I'll record the track and so I can play it back to you. 
So this device here uh, is a motion simulator. It's one of the first ones developed that, in New Zealand that has a glass cockpit. He penei tēnei mihini ki tētehi kemu tākoro kei runga pawaka whakāta. He oi ko te rereketanga ka taia e ngā tauira, te whiwhi ngā haora rerenga, ko whakaaitia e te manatū waka rererangi o Aotearoa. Rangi mai, papa mai, heaha te pai tawhiti mō ngā tauira Māori. At this stage I see a pathway into flight instructing for a little while. From there I then want to move into Air New Zealand. Ko oku nei whainga, kia uruatuau ki roto i tētahi kamupene e mahi ana ngā mahi mō ngā tangata tūroro. Haere ana ki ngā hohi pera no te rāwahi, no te rāwahi. And you see, that's where Māori have got to be, on that leading edge, on that technological edge, because that's the way of the future. I think we've done well in the primary industries, but now it's time to move into the high-tech industries and that's where I see it, the future for young Māori, especially in aviation. E topa topa na ngā tauira Māori nei ki te rangi e whakatina nāna i ngā moi moia. Ka te siwa atu mātou ki a te rewiti hei kai arahi mō mātou mō māua ko Krei, anō te mea kua ea ia ki ngā taumata the first time I flew myself in Tūrotura, I was happy to fly into home, but more so happy for my nan, who was there to pick me up, to see me flying in, as opposed to us being together watching other planes fly in. You know, it was my turn. And so she's very, very happy and very proud of me for doing that. And then after a few times she got sick of it and she just told me to text her when we get to the airport. So that phase sort of you know, went out. Fantastic. Well, it's uh, official. He's no longer the MP for Te Tai Tokero, but he's still the leader of the mana movement. Joining me now is Hone Haruera. Tēnā koe. Kia Thanks for joining us this morning. You've just declared on Q&A that you're going to be running again in 2017. Was that ever in question for you? Oh, you know, life's an evolving thing, so you never know where, what's going to be happening. But, um, you know, certainly the passion from the membership is probably at a higher level than it has been quite some time. So they're really happy to have me out. Certainly the folks from up home are keen to get their MP back. Um, but all around the country, mana's really, really bubbling. So you, you couldn't say no. If you said no, you probably wouldn't be able to get here. You'd be there, in hospital. There must have been a point, though, where you thought, well, that's it. Election night would have been a rough one for you. No, actually, uh, surprisingly not. Um, I was lucky because I had my whānau there. <coughs> had my mokopunas there. They were draped all over me. They always uh, balance me out. But and still, you looked unhappy. Actually, I'm, I didn't really feel that unhappy. I mean, I was asked to concede. I said, I don't concede, it's not in my nature. And in fact, one of the good things about not conceding, for those of you in politics, is if you concede on the night, all your travel benefits stop at 12 o'clock. <laughs> if, 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 if you don't, you get to fly around the country and go and see all your people for the next two weeks. Seriously, that's why you didn't concede? No, 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 that's not why I, I didn't. I don't because I, I just never give up. But I was, when I found out the next day that I had those travel benefits on going, I thought, right, bang, Auckland, Hamilton, Rotorua, Gisborne, all around the country. OK, so what does the future hold for the mana movement? I mean, is there still life for it? Oh, absolutely. Um, as long... As long as we have the levels of poverty that we have right now, and never before in the history of this country has so much poverty been imposed on so many people, not just Māori either, in such a short time as, so they, what are you have, do? as they have done in the last six years. So, Is mana better as a political force or perhaps more as a, a, a life, if you like, force? Mana is a movement. It's never been a political party, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for us maintaining faith with that because... It's important that we're strong outside Parliament anyway. Even as an MP, it's important for, for me to have known that the, the membership was strong. And to see the way they are now really gives me hope for the things we have to do. It's going to be tough. Um, but, I mean, the people at the bottom, you know, our kids are, uh, are starving. Uh, we've got thousands, thousands of families are homeless right now. So mana will, life, will continue? Life can never be as tough for me as it is for... You, you'll fight for families. the same principles. Sure, absolutely. Will .com be in that picture? Um, we've, we've, I've had a chat with him since the election and we've asked him, not so much for the f money side of things, but to be involved in uh, these internet camps that we're hoping to host around the, 
around the country, starting in the north, because we think that um, the internet, a bit like those boys have just seen, who have become pilots, we need to find out the way of the future. We need to get our kids engaged in that. And we you need the families to understand being key to, to getting He's a magnetic personality and he knows more about the internet than anybody I have ever met in my whole life. But you'll keep him restricted to the internet part of the money movement? Because clearly oh. the election results showed that, and even .com said, that he was not good for that campaign. Sure, there's, there's a difference between the, what he does know and electoral campaigning. I think, in hindsight, his presence during the campaign could have been managed better. Um, but, you know... The way he talks to our people, the way he engages with young people, I think is a real positive um, thing. And I'd, I'd like to see that, where his engagement with our rangatahi, turning them on to the internet, us doing our best to improve access to the internet in rural communities. And would, would one of the keys be for you, do you think, to um, realign yourself with the Māori Party? Ah, that's another option. Um, actually, it's not another option. It's an option I first opened in 2011 and came so back So what, what would you say to Te Rudor Flavel right now? I'd say to Te Rudor Flavel that the principle of kotahitanga, which is something I said way back in 2011, the principle of kotahitanga, of unity within Māori dim, is more important than me as the leader of mana and him as the leader of the Māori party. Okay, so you I'd can be, work with Te Rudor. I would be quite happy to step down as the leader of mana if he stood down as the leader of the Māori Party and let the people determine how best to bring those two, two bodies together. That's, that's the importance of Ko So that's your the, wero, that's your challenge today? Well, it's something I've said for the last few years. It's been turned down and uh, consistently. Let's just Good be clear. Though, the, the wero is, to do it all. you stand down, I'll stand down, I, we'll I, let the people decide. I, I, I don't want that to be the, uh, the reason why he says no. So there are a number of options. I'm more than happy to discuss whatever that might be. I really think it's probably best if Tūruru and I stay out of those discussions in the early part and let the rest of Mana and the rest of the Māori Party talk about it. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, but let it not be because he didn't try. What's your advice to Calvin Davis and his, his now electorate? Oh, it'll always be my electorate, first of all. I mean, Calvin's now the MP and I wish him well. I wish him well. It's, um, it's a challenging and vibrant electorate, probably the best electorate in the, in the country with the most... Uh, vivacious and treacherous and <laughs> demanding and, uh, you know, s sort of people with high expectations of you as an MP. I, I just wish him well in what he has to do. Uh, I wish him peace with, the, with, uh, with himself. I think sometimes he comes across as overly angry and the people up home, they just well, like to know... Say, <laughs> let's just say you do too, but we have to leave it there, oh. I'm afraid. Thank you so much for your, uh, your time with us. Okay. It's lovely to have you here. And we've got some rangatahi now sitting on the couch with Scotty. Yes, we do indeed. So capturing the youth vote was a priority in the election. So what do young people think of the election aftermath? Joining me to discuss this are Hine Te Araki Parata Waka e Ngā Rauiri Pūmanoa Whiti, tēnā rā kōrua. You've just heard what Horne had to say. Can I just ask both of you... Just to begin our conversation, what did you make of the internet mana campaign, Nara Wedi? Um, it's evident now that the association with .com um, damaged the, the mana brand. Um, but can I say that that constituency won't um, sort of won't give up overnight. Um, it's the same constituency that gave birth to the Māori Party. Mm. It's the same constituency which then um, left the Māori Party uh, over its disillusionment with um, some of their political activities. Now. Um, uh, coming back to um, that association in itself, um, what you had is two um, successful campaigns um, against um, the mana leader, Hone Harawira, and um, Kim.com. And so you had Kim.com's private battle uh, against John mm -hmm. Key, mm -hmm. and then you had Hone Harawira, uh, who seems to be having battles with many people. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> what you had then is you had two targets aligned then, um, and, I mean, it was, you know, uh, the, the election result... Um, really proved this to be true. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Hone's just said that he wants to keep Kim.com in the picture, he need, and he said that he's going to keep him there because he feels that he engages with our rangatahi. Do you, do you feel engaged by Kim.com? Um, personally, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I do think that, as Hone's just explained, that they do have initiatives of with the mana movement outside of parliament mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. and that's probably um, likely to continue in the next three years. Mm -hmm. um, and he's also said that that will continue um, the relationship with Kim.com as well, um, and some of those initiatives will culminate in internet hubs with rangatahi, and um, 
No doubt that the intention there is um, a good intention to upskill rangatahi um, in the internet area, but I personally um, am, am not a fan mm. of Kindle. And, and you were part of the youth parliament. Yeah. What do you expect from our Māori politicians who are in parliament? Do you expect them, mm. when they talked about te, te kotahitanga, mm -hmm. kia mahitahi rata, do you expect yeah. our Māori, Māori politicians to work together in parliament? It's, it's, a, it's a really difficult thing, and that's something that I learnt in um, youth parliament, but also have continued to see um, through since then as well. And and it's a really fine line balancing between being in a Māori seat, I think, and also having to follow the party line. And um, a lot of times we see when those two ideas clash. Um, and it really is um, about maybe um, seeing, serving your constituency um, and making sure that their voices are heard in Parliament as well. But it's really hard when, all, um, it, across the political spectrum, I guess, um, Māori... It, yeah, it's just really hard to make sure that Māori MPs are together um, and do have a collective voice because if they wanted to enter Parliament with um, the same voice, I guess they would all join the same party, but they all have different political inclinations, I So what, which constituency are you going to stand for when you are going to no. go to in the future? Just no. so people out there know who to vote I'm for. I'm not interested in those seats. I'm looking at that seat and it's looking pretty oh, good. Kapai, okay, kapai. We can, we can organise that, I'm sure. Nā rauiri me mohi orani. Ngā kai tōra ngapū Māori ki te kōrero Māori? Ki au nei mena e, e ngana ana rātou, e mena e tū ana rātou ki te whakakanohi mai tō tātou whenua, mm. ne, mena he kōwhiringa tērā nō rātou, tēnā whakakōrero hia mai taua i taua māngaitanga mā te mōhio ki tō tātou reo. Ka hāreau ki, mm. ka ki haina, a, ka re kore mui mārmau ki tērā unga reo. Mm. Ka hāreau ki, ki wiwi ki whaake rānei, e hoa mā ko kei ao te aroa mātou. Ne, kwa, ta, kwa huri te ao, kwa tae a te wā, kia whai wāhi mai ai te reo Māori a, ki, roto i mahi, ki roto i te whare. A, e hari te me a pātai noi honei, ingari roto i ngā tau patu patu runga, roto i ngā āhuatanga kato. Mm -hmm. Kia te whakai koe hine? Ai, um, ko te reo Māori te tatau ki te ao Māori. Mm. Nā reira, ina, e noho ana koe ki roto i, I ngā tūru Māori, a, ko koe rā ngā tangata me whakawhiti whiti whakaaro, koe rā o tangata, um, koe rā te iwi, uh, nā rātou tonu i whakamana tō tū ki roto i te whare paremata. Um, ai, kaore e kore, me, no, me mohio koe ki te reo Māori. Ina, ina, ina kore, kore e tāia, kaore e koe e uru, uru atu ki te rā o ngā tatau, mm. ki te rā o ngā whakapia. Mm -hmm. Tēnā kore, mihi nui atu ana ki o kore e tai mai nei <laughs> ki maha i tēnei ata. Kā re kore, hei, hei uh, pōpō ka ki te tīwi a kore e piki ake ane ngā tau mato te ao huri huri nei. Nō reira, tēnā kore, hei mihi ana. Kia ora. Kia ora. Those two just made me want to cheer. Very exciting. All right, it happened three years ago today when the Rena hit Otaiti Reef. It created the country's largest maritime environmental disaster and still toxic wreckage remains. We flew to Motiti Island to listen to people who are still fighting to restore their sacred reef. When Te Matehaere was a little girl, they grew maize and kumara. The kina were fat, the power plentiful. You just could go, go down and get you what you want. You know, just daily. Everyone here in Lance Times helped everybody. She returned to the island in 2007, joining a community of about 40 relations, most of whom were also retired. She kept busy, kaimona was still plentiful, the life peaceful and simple, until the morning of October the 5th, 2011. The Rena was making its way into the port of Tauranga early this morning when it hit the Astrolab Reef around four nautical miles north of Motiti Island. It's just like any accident where one of yours is involved. And, uh, and the helplessness you felt. Motiti Island was invaded by officials and media, yet with scarce resources, the locals housed and fed hundreds of volunteers from all over the world. We tried to keep control over things so that it was done the way we wanted things to be done, so we didn't forget the tikanga part. You know, it's like, this is our whenua, you come this way and you and, and you speak to us before you go, before you go there, which was, really frustrating too sometimes and it and it caused you know some <laughs> difficulties between the the agencies but we you know it was like just come and ask and then I know but don't just go and do whatever you think you you've got a right to do because you don't 
In fact, Maritime New Zealand had taken control. It is very difficult to determine exactly where the oil is leaking from. It appeared to locals they were out of their depth. For days, the ship sat intact on the reef in perfectly calm waters before a storm hit, eventually spilling 234 tonnes of heavy fuel and containers into the sea. Ultimately, we are going to have to find who is responsible for uh, this accident, and they will need to be held to account. Despite the government's $47 million spend on the Rena cleanup, Maritime laws say the wreck is the ship owner's responsibility, and that's where the story becomes as tangled as the toxic mess that's still sitting on the reef today. Danish shipping say it's going to cost too much and be too dangerous to remove the whole wreck. But last week, an independent report accused them of exaggerating their figures. Whatever the cost, it wouldn't be to our government or ratepayers. Remove it. Simple. Whether you have to pass another law or legislate another law, do it. Do something good for once for the people of Aotearoa. In desperation, Rangi co-opted her whanaunga buddy Mikaere to help make a claim to the Waitangi Tribunal. The subsequent draft report heavily criticised the government for agreements they made with the owners in 2012, breaching the treaty and seriously weakening any case to remove the wreck. You could surmise that the government is looking after the um, economics of the companies that come here to take our goods away. Yeah, we all accept that New Zealand needs that to happen, but why can't it happen in a safe way? And why should the interests of those foreign companies take precedence over, over us, you know, the people who live here? This is our country, this is our environment. Buddy lives on the mainland. Three years down the track, oblivious to most beachgoers, he's still picking up tiny plastic beads from the wreck, which are harmful to fish and birds. Yeah, the impact is still going on. Having the arena taken away uh, would have a huge uh, impact on lifting um, the spirits of the people, um, showing that, yeah, you can achieve justice. Soon the Mōtiti people are heading to the Environment Court, fighting against the owner's applications to leave what remains of the wreck where it is. In August, the government decided some of the wreck should be removed, some should remain. Normally the person with the most resources wins. We're trying to sell raffles and um, uh, T-shirts uh, to, to get the resources together to, to put up you know, a halfway decent battle. No matter what the outcome of the case, it's the legacy that concerns the Mōtiti community. Our routines change, and a lot of things are probably just like parking the car in your lounge, you know. Because of where we are, geographically and, you know, spiritually and physically, unless you're of it, you don't know it. Challenged by offers of compensation and outside pressure, they hold tight to their kaitiakitanga and their determination to clear the rena from their lives. I have four grandchildren. This fight should not be left for them to continue with. It should end with me and my age group and make a better place for my grandchildren and their children's children yet unborn. Everything is for the everything is for our for our, for our children, isn't it? If we, if we don't do it now, well, they're going to say, well, my, my koro didn't do a good job. I think there were bigger plans for, for this place than what's been, you know, let on. But um, it's not going to happen. Heha koe ia te wawata o ngā pāpa katoa. Kā re kore ko te kite tonu i wātātou kuru paunamu ara i wātātou tamāhine. A koe ia tonu rā te wawata o te tahi pāpa o ngā tiporou, kei te rohe koura o ahi treiria e noho mai ana, o tira e whakatikatika ana kia kite ake i tana tamāhine mō te wā tuatahi.
this is very much a story about a dad and his girl. Our job is to make a mess. <laughs> He's the stay-at-home primary caregiver to little Erica. No big deal, you might think. But it is when you consider he can't see any of the highs or the lows. You know, she's mine and I don't really know what she actually looks like. How do you know your baby? What things, what does she smell? Oh, uh, she's loud. <laughs> she smells like, um, I can't really describe it. I just, I just know what she smells like. Um, yeah. Deliciousness? Yeah, pretty much. But you can hear it before she's coming. There's a bit of guesswork, but he gets the job done. People don't actually know that I'm blind. He's very independent, yeah. And, yeah, he, he doesn't ask anyone for help. He, he won't ask me even for help unless he really has to. Kid is legally blind from a condition called keratoconus. Basically, his corneas have been shot since he was 15. I had um, contacts, but they were kind of made out of... Um, like a hard plastic. They used to pinch my eyeball, so I stopped wearing those. They didn't really work anyway. It's been a fight to accept that transplanted corneas would come from someone who's died. It is a way up between Māori tanga and seeing. <laughs> but it was this little one who changed everything. I don't actually really care that I was blind until, um, until my bubby came along. <laughs> My dream is probably just to be able to see. When you discuss the corneal transplant because he wants to see his daughter's face. Yeah. Did that get you in the heart? Yeah. Because I don't know what it's like to be blind. I don't even wear glasses. So um, knowing that something that I take for granted is something that's really big for Kitty was, um, yeah, touching. Yeah. He doesn't want to be on the sideline anymore. When they go back to back home to New Zealand, you know, I want to teach her how to do all, all sorts of stuff, you know, riding a bike, I mean, driving if I could see, you know, um, just, you know, even just basic things, say. To avoid hospital waiting lists, the Keelans have started a Give A Little campaign. We're looking at around $12,000 to $13,000 to get both his eyes done and the specialist visits and then aftercare after that. We've got just over $1,000 now. Yeah. There are other reasons Kitty wants to see. Can't really get a job, the fact that I can't support my family like that. Is, yeah, yeah. It's pretty, uh, pretty sad. It's got to sort of keep your head up. Like when I do gigs and stuff, um, get paid for doing that, so I suppose in a way that's my job. It's things that normal couples also take for granted, for example, we miss out on a few things simply because we only have one wage, where everyone else has two wages. It's just, uh, it seems like um, that's a bit shallow or selfish or whatever, but it really does make a difference, you know. It's a world out of focus, but until he gets his op, Kitty won't lose just sight of who he wants to see. So if you'd like to make a donation towards Kere Keelan's operation, you can go to givealittle.co.nz or find the link on our Facebook page and website and we'll keep you updated on his progress. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for Wakahui's profile and highly respected kaumātua and Ngāti Awa leader, Waka Verko. Ngā tau whirotanga o te wā, ki a koutou katoa noho ora mai. Hey, man.